Okay, one more thing about Kant um, and the categorical imperative. We said the categorical imperative could be expressed as always treat human beings as ends and never merely as means uh, or respect persons. Uh, and by the way, um, when Kant says always treat human beings as ends and never merely as means, he doesn't mean you don't treat human beings as means. Of course, human beings have to be treated as means in certain circumstances. For example, when you have a waiter, uh, they are a means to get your food. But if you treat them as merely a means, that is, if they're just some kind of thing that's designed to, you know, some kind of robot or machine that's designed to bring you your food, that's not a morally praiseworthy action. I can treat people as means, but not merely as means. I can't reduce their dignity or their subjectivity and because then I'd be violating their personhood. Okay, so that's the first version of the categorical imperative. Actually, it's the second version in the text, but don't worry about it. Um, but that we could say that's the first uh, or the most accessible version. Always treat human beings as ends and never merely as means. But this this other version that Kant, uh, Kant's first formulation of it, for some for some reason, has gotten more attention. But I don't think it's as powerful as the version we talked about. You know, ends in themselves or respect for persons. The other version Kant gives uh, goes like this: uh, Never act unless I can will that my maxim be a universal law. Never act unless I can will that my maxim be a universal law. Never act unless I can will that my action be a universal law, that is, apply for everybody, so apply to everybody. So what he means is, uh, and he says this is the same as treating people in a dignified manner, don't act unless I can picture everybody doing it. And if I can picture everybody doing it, then it's a good action. If I can't, then it's a bad action. So he gives the example of suicide. Obviously, you can't act, you can't kill yourself because if everybody killed themselves, where would that lead us? Or I can't steal because if everybody stole, society would, would break down. Or I can't lie because if everybody lied, business dealings would break down. So Kant says, uh, the, another version of the categorical imperative, he thinks it's the same articulation as always treat people as ends and never merely as means, is to say, never act unless you can will that your action be universalized. You can picture everybody doing it. And he actually thinks that this is uh, the the rational foundation for something like the golden rule. Treat other people the way you'd like to be treated or do unto others as you would have them do unto you. He thinks what's really behind that is imagining everybody doing something and seeing if it works out. Now, whether or not they're the same thing uh, he thinks they are, namely an action out of uh, for the sake of duty is acting uh, so I can uh, uh, imagine that action being universalized or acting for the sake of respect for persons. Both are the moral law. Both are the categorical imperative for Kant. Both are um, uh, our duty as human beings, as moral agents, as rationally free moral agents. Okay, so just to summarize, the two versions of the categorical imperative never act unless you can will that your maxim, subjective principle of volition, uh, be a universal law. Never act unless you can will that your maxim be a universal law. Two, always treat human beings as ends and never merely as means. That's what the that that's the articulation of the foundation of morality for Kant is, namely the articulation of human dignity and respect for persons.